Kazakh Film presents Health for All. Every minute there are 200 babies born in the world. Just one minute increases the population. What awaits them in life? This year alone, 15 and a half million children will die throughout the world before reaching the age of five. 15 million of them from the developing countries. poverty-stricken people in the world for whom the necessary health level is but a dream. The world is still far from the goal of the World Health Organization outlined 30 years ago to achieve a high level of health for all nations. In 1977, the World Health Organization proclaimed its slogan of Health for All by the year 2000. An important event on the way to achieving this goal was the WHO UNICEF International Primary Health Care Conference held in Almaty, capital of the Kazakh Republic, on the invitation of the Soviet government. The conference is attended by renowned doctors of the world, including Minister of Health, prominent state and public figures, doctors from 134 countries, representatives of many specialized UN agencies, and other governmental and non-governmental organizations. The Lenin Conference Hall in Almaty on September 6th 1978. Electing the Presidium, its chairman is Soviet Minister of Health Boris Petrovsky. Political Bureau member and first secretary of the Kazakh Communist Party, Kunayev, reads out a message of greetings to the conference from General Secretary and President Leonid Brezhnev. On behalf of the Presidium of the USSR Supreme Soviet, the Soviet people, and myself, I sincerely greet the delegates to the International Primary Health Care Conference, who have come to our country to discuss such important questions as ways and means of ensuring one of the inalienable rights of every individual irrespective of race, religion, color, or property status, the right to health protection. Concern for improving the people's health is inseparably bound up with the solution of the main contemporary problem, the preservation and strengthening of peace, further deepening the process of relaxing international tensions, doing away with the danger of a nuclear war, and making progress in the field of disarmament.
In the developing countries, said Dr. Mohammed, chairman of the 31st session of the WHO, medical services are absolutely inadequate. There is a lot we can learn from each other, said Professor Reed, chairman of the WHO Executive Committee. WHO Director General Dr. Maller. Mr. President, Excellences, Honorable Participants, Ladies and Gentlemen, Colleagues and Friends. I should like first of all to express my gratitude to the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics for having so very generously accepted to host this important conference. The Soviet Union has indeed been a pioneer since the very first day of its revolution more than 50 years ago in placing health in the forefront of social goals and in linking its attainment with social justice and economic development. Dr. Mahler called on the governments of all countries to review national policy and plans in the field of primary health care. Executive Director of the UN Children's Aid Fund, Dr. Labouy. Mr. President, honorable delegates, ladies and gentlemen, I first want to join Dr. Mahler in expressing UNICEF's gratitude to the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics for inviting us to Alma Ata and for providing the facilities for this conference. And our special thanks also go to the authorities and the people of the Kazakhstan for their warm welcome in this beautiful city. It is indeed fitting that a country which has done so much to extend health care for all its citizens should host this meeting. On behalf of the Soviet Union, the delegates were greeted by the Minister of Health of Kazakhstan, Professor Sharmanov. The conference president, Academician Petrovsky. This conference is very important in outlining concrete ways of fulfilling the sweeping aims of bringing health to all by the year 2000, as adopted by the WHO in 1977. Actually, this means that in an historically short period of time, the inalienable right of every individual to health must be fully guaranteed. I should like to point out that this conference is an important stage in the search for ways of developing the systems and agencies of health protection, the most acceptable for the populations and governments of many countries, mainly the developing countries, which would then be in a position to ensure the population of each country with adequate and effective medical aid. Uh, what is your opinion concerning the future work in the field? The Director General of the Indonesian Ministry of Health, Dr. Subekti. This conference, the, resol the resolutions or the recommendations, I think will further uh, strengthen the backing that we need. Mm -hmm. And the political will of the governments will be there and will, for us, the professionals, much easier to implement the primary health care concept. The State Minister of Health and Family Welfare of India, Dr. Yadav. India is a vast country which have 80 percent populations who are living in the village mm -hmm. and uh, up to now they have neglected in the health sphere. On October last year, 1977, we have started community health workers scheme on every 1,000 we have selected among the uh, community one health workers uh, and we have trained them for, uh, for uh, three uh, months uh, and after three months they have returned to the village. Primary health care in the joint report of the WHO UNICEF was in the center of attention of the plenary sessions. 
The primary health care program includes a wide range of problems that concern people the world over. Among these are hygienic education, basic sanitary and hygienic measures such as provision of rational nourishment and an adequate supply of drinking water, mother and child health care, vaccinations against infectious diseases, preventive measures, and treatment of the most widespread illnesses. The conference was given good coverage in the media. Journalists meet Senator Edward Kennedy. In my speech, I mentioned that uh, countries throughout the world spend 300 billions of dollars. You'll have to uh, transform that to ruples, but 300 billions of dollars on weapons of destruction. And we only spend a very, very small percentage of that to try and make people healthy and to provide education and to clean our uh, rivers and to keep our air clean. And that's why it's important for uh, the people of the United States work closely with the people in the Soviet Union. Uh, so we uh, do the things that are for life and uh, turn us back from uh, the weapons of death and uh, the people in both nations have to work uh, to achieve it. And then we can achieve the goal of good health by the year 2000. The three committees of the conference discussed the ties between health care and the plans for social and economic development, a broad exchange of experience and information on practical questions of health care the role of governments and national and international organizations in the development of primary health care. The Minister of Health of Angola, Coelho da Cruz. C'est une question qui a an importance très grande dans the problem of primary health care is extremely important for our country which has acquired independence only recently elle a conquisté son independence à peine à prochainement 3 ans dans long period colonial uh, during the long period of colonialism the condition of our people's health had been very poor and only the ruling clique received medical care a unicef exhibition during the conference shows elementary household health care aids in african and asian countries The committees draft recommendations for different countries and differing conditions. Particular stress is placed on the responsibility of governments for the health of their people. The importance is pointed out of training primary health care workers, material and medical supplies. Measures must be coordinated in developing all spheres of health care in individual countries and within the framework of international cooperation. A display of modern medical equipment set up by the socialist member states of the Council for Mutual Economic Assistance. 
The delegates visit Frunze, the capital of Kyrgyzia, Tashkent, capital of Uzbekistan, and the cities of Karaganda and Chimkent. They also visited Samarkand and Bukhara, ancient Central Asian cities. This is the way it used to be. The average lifespan in Tsarist Russia was 32 years. It was even less in the national regions. The plague, pox, cholera, and other diseases were widespread. Each of the few doctors had to care for more than 10,000 people. Just over 60 years ago, a terrible heritage left for the young Soviet state. The Great October Socialist Revolution opened the doors for the creation of an entirely different health care system. Vladimir Lenin was the initiator of the new system. State run, free, accessible to all, and qualified aid to the entire population of the country. These Leninist principles have remained at the foundation of Soviet health protection. From its very first days, the land of Soviets considered health care to be the fulfillment of a whole range of economic, social, and medical steps with the help of the entire people. At all stages of the formation of the Soviet system of health protection, planned measures were carried out in creating a broad network of preventive establishments, training specialists, and introducing practical hygiene. Health education was carried out on a wide scale. The rate and scope of these measures increased and ever more complex tasks were solved. The Communist Party and government are constantly concerned with the problems of health protection. Among social tasks, no task is more important than concern for the Soviet people's health, said Leonid Brezhnev. In the Soviet Union, the right to free and accessible medical service is guaranteed in the Constitution and is provided by the state system of health protection. The most important part in the health protection system are the outpatient polyclinics, which provide basic and specialized treatment.
The work of the polyclinics is based on the territorial sector principle. The region is divided into sectors, each with a definite number of residents. Each sector has its quota of doctors and nurses. The district doctor is an important figure in our preventive health service, for he is well acquainted with the residents in his sector, with their living and working conditions. All this makes it easier to provide qualified medical aid when it is most needed. The Malaysian Minister of Health, Dr. Suleiman Daoud. Well, to be very frank with you, I am very impressed with your setup. Um, because I feel that you have got a lot of specialties in a clinic like this, apart from the ordinary outpatients and uh, uh, laboratory services. You also have uh, x-rays and above all things, the uh, cardiology and physiotherapy, which is uh, in our country. The network of specialized polyclinics is being increased, such as this stomatological clinic. The ambulance service. Minutes and even seconds may mean life or death. The ambulances have qualified teams of doctors and modern equipment. Supplementing the ambulance service with specialized hospitals is a new system. In the USSR, particular attention is given to health protection service for workers at industrial enterprises. This is done not only through the outpatient polyclinics, but also through health posts belonging to the enterprise. Such health service units are located directly at the enterprise and even in the shops. The shop doctors treat industrial accidents and other unexpected ailments, but the most important part of their work is preventive medicine. They disseminate general medical knowledge, make wide use of the Red Cross and Red Crescent Society. Health service units are the primary units of the medical and health posts that have their own polyclinics and hospitals. These health service units afford excellent medical facilities to the workers and employees of industrial enterprises.
health protection of the population is the duty of all state and public organizations. For this lies at the foundation of all national and republican health legislation. Concern for the health of all Soviet people is ensured by the entire system of socio-economic measures on labor protection and to raise the people's living standards. Hygienic control is carried out by the hygienic and epidemiological agencies. They see to it that all public catering organizations and enterprises abide by existing norms, that working conditions and health care are given primary attention. They make sure that all rules and regulations of hygiene are duly observed. requirements of sanitary epidemiological services are law for all offices, organizations, and enterprises. A safe sanitary epidemiological picture in the country is the concern of the entire state. Children should be born healthy, and care for the child begins long before it is born. At women's consultation centers, expectant mothers are observed by doctors during the entire period of pregnancy and are given advice on their hours of work and rest. Here they are given maternity instruction and advice on the hygiene of pregnancy and care for the newborn. These centers are visited by all women during their period of pregnancy. The preventive trend in Soviet medicine is the more apparent in polyclinics for children. These polyclinics observe the children at home up to the age of three. They see to it that all vaccinations are made and continue dispensary care to the age of 15. Preventive medicine and treatment is ensured for children by observation of the child from the day of birth, which continues in polyclinics and hospitals and in sanatoria. The very best for children. This Leninist behest is faithfully observed in the Soviet Union. The state system of socialist health care is founded on principles identical for both the urban and rural population. and forms of medical aid are flexible and varied, 
depending on the type of labor, population density, climatic and geographical conditions. For the rural population, medical aid is accessible in the following stages. The village health care center, district hospitals, regional and republican hospitals, and their polyclinics and dispensaries. A rural health center includes a district hospital, a polyclinic, and a network of Felcher midwife centers. For the rural population, the Felcher midwife centers provide immediate medical care. This is where primary medical aid is accorded prior to seeing a doctor. Here also, doctor's prescriptions are fulfilled and preventive measures taken. Lessons in hygiene. Regional hospitals are capable of providing multi-profile skilled aid. Such hospitals are equipped practically as well as urban medical centers and are staffed with doctors of 12 and more specialities. A regional hospital is also a center of medical education and knowledge for the entire region. Mobile medical aid units. The teams usually include eye specialists, dentists, children's doctors, general doctors, and surgeons. They also carry out preventive examinations and outpatient treatment. Such teams often include blood donor specialists. The last stage in medical aid for the rural population is the Republican Hospital with its qualified and highly specialized medical staff. All the latest in medical science is effectively applied here. Throughout its history, Soviet healthcare has continually improved this system of caring for the people's health. There does not exist a clearly defined barrier between primary and other levels of medical care, including highly specialized treatment. Every Soviet citizen, irrespective of social standing or place of residence, 
has equal opportunities of receiving medical aid from simple inoculations to the most complicated operations. The six million medical workers of whom more than 900,000 are doctors take good care of the Soviet people's health. The delegates to the conference were acquainted with the work of over 300 various medical agencies in Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, and Kyrgyzia. The health minister of Costa Rica, Carmelo Calvazo. I opportunity visit from a simple health we visited numerous medical establishments from Felcher Midwife Centers, Polyclinics, and Hospitals to the ambulance service. We are very satisfied with what we have seen because we have learned a good deal that is new and helpful to us. Tiene uno la oportunidad de hacer de de llegar a a esos lugares. According to WHO estimates, there should be 280 doctors for 100,000 of the population. In the Soviet Union, there are 344 doctors for every 100,000, more than in any other country. The broad network of medical research institutes and specialized centers deal with the most urgent problems of preventing and lowering cases of illnesses, prolonging longevity and health improvement. During the years of Soviet power, the death rate has dropped 300% and child mortality by over 900%. The lifespan has more than doubled. Soviet health protection, its broad scale, planned nature and scientific basis, its preventive trend and accessibility have aroused very great interest.
The delegates, however, were interested not only in the achievements and experience of Soviet medicine, they were also interested in the way Soviet people live. Such meetings lead to better mutual understanding. It is obvious that it is hardly possible to create a unified health protection system for all countries of the world. There are, however, certain aspects without which it would not be possible to establish an effective health system. The president of the World Federation of Public Health Associations, Mr. Defoe. We also believe that a great deal can be learned from the experiences here in the Soviet Union in the health delivery system. And uh, from our perspective as the World Federation of Public Health Association, we have had an opportunity to meet delegates from both your country and from many other countries and exchange ideas on how we can achieve the goal of health for all the people by the year 2000. Uh, we suspect that uh, we will be very successful in achieving this goal because many people are dedicated to working very hard to develop primary health care. And, uh, Dr. Marcella like Davis, Sierra Leone. To thank the people of the Soviet Union and the Kazakhstan Republic in particular for their generous hospitality. We hope that from this conference will emerge the strategy for world action to um, bring relief to the masses of people in the developing countries who do not have access to any sort of health care. But more than that, we hope that through our development in the health sector, we will be able to bring up the standard of living of our people because this is going to be an intersectoral development. The conference concluded its work and the delegates again thank the Soviet government and the government of Kazakhstan for organizing this informative conference which has become an important stage in resolving pressing questions in developing and improving the health protection agencies capable of providing the people of all countries, particularly the developing countries, with accessible, adequate, and effective primary health care. Participants, ladies and gentlemen, I have the honor and privilege to read to you the Declaration of Alma Atta. The International Conference on Primary Health Care meeting in Alma Atta this 12th day of September in the year 1978, expressing the need for urgent action by all governments all health and development workers and the world community to protect and promote the health of all the people of the world hereby makes the following declaration. One, the conference strongly reaffirms that health, which is a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity, is a fundamental human right, and that the attainment of the highest possible level of health is a most important worldwide social goal whose realization requires the action of many other social and economic sectors in addition to the health sector. It is significant that these important decisions of the Almata Conference were adopted on the eve of the Year of the Child. Health for all, is the future.
script, Boris Gutlin and Boris Zeretko. Direction, Boris Gutlin. Camera, Oleg Rimzhanov, Yuri Litvekov, Edward Bayarsky and others. Produced for the USSR Ministry of Health.